Moment of silence. Dogs of Warcry is a podcast from the Mortal Realms focusing on Warcry, a fast-paced cinematic skirmish game by Games Workshop. You can expect discussions on gameplay, rules, lore, painting, terrain, campaigns, events, and more. In episode three of season six, we will dive into Hunter and Hunted, the first expansion in the second wave of Narwhal models and terrain. We'll discuss the new models, the maw pit, new rules, and surprises found in this box. My name is Eric, and answering the call with me again this week is josh how you oh doing? yeah i am here ready and willing let's do it <laughs> well thanks for joining me uh vint may be joining us a little later in the episode uh at the time of recording uh, uh we weren't able to get together all at the exact same time but uh we're all looking forward to this episode um uh this is uh i just want to quick say this episode is releasing uh on the day that uh the Hunter and Hunted box can be uh, pre-ordered uh, from Games Workshop. This is October 7th. Um, and uh, not only that, uh, thanks Games Workshop for giving us a preview copy so that we could create this content and have it ready for you, uh, listener, um, uh, as you're trying to decide whether you want to buy it and maybe take Josh's advice uh, on, on whether you should or not. Uh, <laughs> also want to let you know that this is uh, our like maybe third episode where uh, this is also a video cast uh, on YouTube. So you can listen to us on the podcast like you're used to hearing us, but now you can go to our YouTube channel, The Mortal Realms, uh, and uh, see our faces, see the expressions, the emotions. Put uh, names to faces. Yeah. yeah. So... Uh, come on over, and we'll be sharing some of the stuff that we have today on our screens, uh, et cetera. We will do our best not to ignore you who are just listening and be descriptive. Uh, all right. Um, uh, Josh, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm looking forward to talking about uh, this uh, Hunter and Hunted expansion. Uh, yeah. I think uh, we, when we saw it, uh, kind of the release... Um, kind of announcement uh the the community page we were like it kind of fits some of the things we were hoping for in a, yes. a new release yep. uh having the hunter hunted um book mm -hmm. and a few other things that we'll talk about but uh i'm excited to talk about it but we can't get into it just yet we got a whole bunch of other stuff we like to do before we get to the main topic exactly exactly and with that we'll start with the forge of mythraxis Eric, what have you been working on in the, well, since our last podcast yeah well interesting uh uh, uh let's see uh, two things in particular um miles uh my son and i went to um a uh, event up in the twin cities salty seas uh latest event which is like a match play narrative event guy just is like i can mix the two it's fine um and this is called the gnarled goose so there was a mechanic where we had to catch a, a goose that was in the middle of every board uh well he and i have miles is playing uh the the ogre maw tribes his uh gut lord um uh, a yeti a um crusher no a gut glutton with iron fist and then a whole bunch of knoblars and a um um oh what is it the 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 gabapalooza potion guy oh um, okay i know who you're talking about yep yep, yep. so uh he, he's playing a list that, you know that he semi knows with a few additions uh he's got a new uh, gut lord that he built from a uh, kit he got for his birthday so uh, awesome. i've been painting that up and then i brought uh my charybdis uh you may know the charybdis from its oh, uh, i know it's monster win uh during the uh last circle of paint season five exactly uh, yep and then the seven dwarves so i've got seven uh iron well dwarves um, <laughs> that were uh just meant to not die as as die as slowly as possible uh there's like, three of the the four games were objective had some objective based stuff um probably could have had some faster things but you know we did our best 
I'm not going to talk about the that in our um, path to glory. We'll save that for another episode. But right. um, and then on top of that, uh, been building some gorgers because I'm a oh, yeah. lifelong for the entire life of my uh, Warhammer. You're uh, hungry hobby i've been hungry uh, <laughs> and the the, the the big bellies uh were my first loves <laughs> and the empty bellies uh in this release are just gorgeous uh <laughs> gorgeous gorgeous <laughs> um so uh can't get enough of them uh and so been putting those together uh and i'll um i guess the the big takeaway for there and maybe i'll make some videos of it i don't know is that uh, I magnetized all of their hands and weaponry so that you could switch between the different types, the ones with uh, weapons, nice. the ones with just claws, et cetera. So, um, uh, but we'll, yeah. So that's that was a lot of fun. My son is also an ogre player, and mm-hmm. he was excited. Like when he saw the previews for these, he was like, I want those, Dad. If you love me, you'll get me those. I love these hungry guys. Yeah. I love the hungry guys. And he's a growing boy, so he kind of really... he identifies. Yep, yep, yep. I think he had two pork chops at dinner the, last night. All right, empty um, belly curse. It's terrible. <laughs> How about you, uh, Josh? What has been on your table? Well, I, I put together some uh, world record uh, hunters. Yeah, so I didn't magnetize them because I had pretty a pretty good idea of what I wanted in that world list. Hands, so. too. But they're fun. And, and that mall pit, man, the thing is huge. I can't wait to see that in some games. And there's some really interesting rules that go along with it, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but we also, you know, Vint, uh, Eric and I got together and talked about our Adepticon event plans. And so I've also been working on some terrain. I'm kind of doing some proof of concept terrain ideas for, for one of the events, working through that right now. So if if I get something together that works and looks like I want it to, I will share some pictures. But until that moment, keep you all in suspense. <laughs> uh, awesome. Um, what uh, next then? Path to glory. Um, you know, I'm going to let you go first on this one because uh, I, I don't. I, short. Most. Yeah. Well, I'll, I can talk about a few of my prep games uh, before <laughs> talk, going to the event. That's fair because I haven't had any games in like weeks. You know, I still know all the rules, but eventually I got to get a game in. I'm hoping. I mean, do, do you know all the rules? I, I do. I do. But, you know, my familial obligation should be wrapping up. So I should be able to free next week for some actual Warcry games, which I'm looking forward to. Okay. So, Eric, please regale us with your tales of conquest. All right. I've, I, uh, I've been playing uh, some test games with the Carib- Caribdis and the seven dwarves so the list is a oh i should probably look at i don't know all these names by heart because they've <laughs> changed so many times in uh in the history of age of sigmar so let me let me uh give me let me have a little cheat sheet here that's fair um we've got a warden king as the leader <clears throat> Ooh, all right and i got him because i mean they have pretty cheap leaders 150 points for a four four two five uh, 22 wounds, f- starting five toughness. Um, and he's got the um, kind of the shield uh, rune, which in, in cities lets you, um, there's a shield wall ability for a double. And so it, anybody within three inches of the hero who casts that or uses that ability has uh, toughness plus one. So he, go, he, can, he can be included in that plus one toughness. Um, and and uh, spoiler, all the dwarfs in this list have that ability so they can all go to tough six. So that's kind of the, one of the main strategies here. Um, I've got an old guard with ancestral weapon. Again, he's one of the cheaper. He's 110 points, 16 wounds, um, four, three, two, four, that shield ability. And uh, so he's can just, he can be in a different battle group and provide that. So because I have a cog rib disc, the cog rib disc takes up one battle group. So I have two battle groups to fill in, and that means I've got a group. I've got five um, iron breakers on top of that. Uh, so five iron breakers are the smaller of the two. Um, there's long beards, which are seventy five points, and iron breakers, which are sixty. You get a three three one three profile instead of a three three two four profile. So I played a lot more of the three three two four long beards in our campaigns and stuff because they have a yep. little bit more fight to them. 
Um, but I wanted more bodies. That cog ribbed is, is expensive, and so I wanted to get more bodies expensive. on the table. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and and in this case, the the things that these guys are going to be good at is counter uh, and uh, soaking up attacks. Um, and not only that, uh, I'm taking the living city as their uh, uh, cities of Sigmar, not the Tempesai or anything for extra movement. Living city has a reaction disengage. Um, so if I take an attack and it doesn't kill me, I can move away and they're forced to either waste that attack somewhere else or, hmm. um, you know, have to move to, to make it worth it the next time. So gotcha. I, I'm sort of absorbing, I'm, I'm making it hard for them to die by shield wall, 12 wounds, um, and, uh, disengaging if I can. So You're playing hard to get flirtatious, <laughs> very flirtatious, flirtatious dwarves. <laughs> Um, uh, can't pin us down. Uh, we're, we have a fear of commitment. Uh, but, uh, so I've played some games with them, um, and had a good time. I've had a, a had a pretty good time with them. Uh, played a lot of objective missions, even played, uh, there's one of the missions is, is a hunted mission where you pick one of your battle groups to be the hunted, uh, your opponent's battle groups. And so, um, played that one against miles and he had a, a mixed group, an ogre, uh, and two, uh, two Noblars and, uh, or one goblin, one Noblar. And, uh, he ran one of those Noblars really far away. Uh, we both got a quad in our last round and I was able to, to run my warden King far enough and climb a tree and, and kill the little Noblar <laughs> that was left in his group. So that's, that's a vision. <laughs> I'm going to image that. <laughs> but, uh, in return, his gut Lord was, was, uh, he had made some, a movement, uh, decision. Like he had, he had decided to use the quad on the Yeti to try and come over and kill my Kagribus that had 10 wounds left because the because he'd ganged up a few ogres on it. Um, and it didn't quite kill him. Get, he left him on one wound. We replayed Oof. it. Had he like moved the Yeti out of the way, used that quad to get the gut lord the in. Gut lord, gut lord had no problem. So right, just right. kind of walking him through, you know, choices and and you know, not always looking at the obvious and that sort of stuff. But we would nice. have drawn, uh, but uh um, but yeah, he's a little rusty. <laughs> Thank God for me. No, uh, uh, but I'm trying to sharpen that axe so that when you go up to the Twin Cities, he can right, s- right. smash smash some noobs. So people will start to fear your last name. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> no, he's a he's a he's a he's a natural born killer uh, when it comes to work. Yeah. All ogres are, and yeah, they come yeah. up hungry. Make sure you feed them. <laughs> yeah, but we've and and so yeah, I've had a few test games with some other things, but in preparation of this uh the event last weekend i've been playing some test games to see if this is even viable and i don't think it's optimized uh cogribdis or monsters outside the chimera aren't optimized but <coughs> have uh, a monster and seven other bodies is pretty good and have like tough to fun bodies. yeah I like and when else am i going to get the you know to pull the cogribdis out i don't i don't know so you got to pull it out any chance you get so yeah yeah, and it's like a Snow White Seven Dwarves. I, I like your theme. I like. Yeah, I wish it. I could have called the Cogger to Snow White. I, I think if I maybe did a branch, I could have done like a, a branch uh, wraith with it to like do some netting or something like that, <laughs> and then and paint it like a birch tree. Then it could have been Snow White and Seven Dwarves. But you can call the Cogger to Snow White. It could be his nickname. Yeah, maybe Snow White's the driver's name. I like it. I like yeah. it. Yeah. The, the the guy inside the cockpit is Snow White. Very long white beard. Um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. I mean, so those are most of the games I've played. Um, I can't wait to tell you how the event went. Uh, yeah, it was, well, I can't wait to hear about it. Uh, and we'll talk about that uh, in another game. But here we're we're ready to focus on uh, on this box and uh, some of our uh, vision and, madness and some visions of madness. We've seen some wonderful things come out recently. The you know the first. The Savage Lands, Savage Lands set scales of Talaxa set, which is great. I'm glad they released this information because we saw lots of these pictures in the book as we were reviewing it. And we're like, wow, where's all this terrain coming from? And then Games Workshop showed us that we're gonna have this separate terrain set available outside of the miniatures in this box set, which is amazing. I yeah. love that they have more terrain from Talaxis available here. And we get we got the continuation of the bamboo theme. But I, I think there's a lot of interesting height and, uh, you know, also variation in the architecture, which I think is going to be a blast to add to the table. 
Yeah, Definitely one of the, they want to use that. So I mean, one of the things that they're doing in these pictures too is that they're showing like if you put some like uh, height, like like a foam hill or something like that, hmm. and then put the stuff on top, like it adds so much to this. Um, right. And so right. I think it could be worth you know having a couple of foam hills to kind of elevate some things. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we've got um, uh, we've got a bit more scattered terrain than we've mm -hmm. than we've had in the other ones. We've got these two little like gnarly you know bushes we've got a couple of um you know quite a bit of seraphon stuff which we were hoping yep. to see right a little more intact these are uh these little like um pedestal beams are kind of cool because they have a, a a spot where you can sit models right um yeah and and one of the rules that's different in um in this second season is that you can stop on um like the terrain uh that is less than one inch like you can you can put models on it, even if there isn't a one inch by one inch space. It's just considered part of the battlefield floor. Um, so that's kind of new. And so this kind of isn't a one by one inch by one inch platform, but you can balance models on it. Um, we've got new um, kind of sad or like, I don't know. Uh, anchors for the anchor, bridges. Yeah. Yep. yeah. We got two of the, it looks like the longer bridges. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got three of these bigger pieces. Um uh, we've got sort of like a realm gate or arc archway that uh, some of the platforms are one of the platforms on another one of those um, like a curved version of those uh, uh, barriers. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then uh, what looks to me like a living walking. Uh, Gnarl oak. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gnarl oak. Yeah. Um, it's just crawling over this stuff and it looks like it's ready to like just sneak up on you. So yeah. <laughs> um, and then just yeah all of the bamboo is like splayed instead of like in rows so which is really cool and interesting i, I really mm -hmm. like i like that change of aesthetic to really set it apart from the other stuff yeah, i mean it's yeah. still more bamboo to paint yep i agree and it's got the little little frogs on some of the terrain pieces which are fun you know so i think it definitely especially if you paint it all jade like you did in the previous set it'll be a good mixture of uh talaxis with with trees and everything else i'm looking forward yeah. to it yeah and i think i mean um it is definitely some of what we were hoping for from i mean mm -hmm. from the train set last year was getting closer to talaxis and some more right more seraphon, seraphon types type terrain exactly so. and this is still in the sundered scales which is the area they've been kind of delving into in this in this book itself delves even further into so yes. we expect to see more bits of the of the ship in this area so yeah it's nice the sundered, to kind of see yeah. that the sundered scale specifically being kind of where the ship is crashing like into pieces um mm -hmm. let's see and then followed by this uh we did talk about this last episode where we talked about the vulcan flame seekers and this time we're actually going to share some pictures because they did show up in pictures throughout this book as well and as well in, in yeah. the terrain set um again you know we talked about them uh, quite a bit last time i think we all agreed that they looked spectacular and you know just adding kilts essentially to them makes a huge difference in their appearance and and uh and, and the variety of models here, including female dwarfs that we, we all talked about the first time we've kind of seen that iteration, which is nice. Yeah. Some tabards, some shoulder armor, or, you know, some, some chest armor, you know, things like that, bigger capes, uh, mm -hmm. all that just adds some more variety to it. Whereas, you know, the, the, the current fire slayers are like a bunch of screaming, hot, flaming babies, uh, running around them. <laughs> Uh, half, half naked, you know, mostly naked, naked. <laughs> mostly, mostly naked, naked babies. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, these are fantastic, and I mean that that magma dwarf is so cute. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know what to pet it, but burn your hand. <laughs> one of the things being pointed out too is that uh, there's a lot of egg motifs in um, a lot of these. So in the um, in the upcoming uh, monster killers, there's one of the. Um, one of the like goblin models has, or or hobgoblin models has an egg that it's yep. being protective of. Yeah. Um, so I know. Oh, oh, lots of eggs, like you said. Yeah. So, uh, and we know that uh, from the uh, hunters, or what was the what was the flesh eater court ones, the royal hunt. The blood um, hunt. Uh, they they perceive the realm engines like the crystals in the realm engines as being eggs of, of magma droth so mm -hmm. or of of yeah uh so yeah some really cool stuff um really innovating 
this a model line like look at that cool yeah really tall mohawk bottle's cool looking Straight. yeah see and i've got the see i've got i'm trying i've got these side mohawks i know uh, i know you just got to work on the vertical aspect you know, yeah just like... i mean i don't know i'm gonna see how wide i can go <laughs> <laughs> uh, i mean you just need a fancy hat to get the rest of the way up really absolutely all right one second <laughs> I doubt that's all their real hair, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you say such a thing? Uh, sorry, I've got some technical difficulties. All right. All right. Well, um, next. We've uh, then got... we've got something interesting. Yes, the Storm Vault skirmish case, which was just announced recently, this past uh, week or so. Um, when they're touting it for skirmish games, obviously, so Kill Team, Warcry, um, other smaller models, number of models in this particular case. So it looks very interesting. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on this, Eric? You know, I mean, every every time they've put out a new case, like it's a new way of trying to figure out how do we keep models from jostling mm -hmm. while being flexible for lots of different kinds of models. Um, it seems like these little pegs are squishy, like yeah. they're firm when they need to be and then squishy when they come in contact with anything harder than them, right? Like plastic. So like you're not going to, they're not going to be any risk of like scratching your models off of this stuff, I don't think, uh, right. depending on how right. abrasive they are. They seem like it's yeah. a silicone type of mat or something like that, which um, should be good. Um, mm -hmm. I, I like it uh, in terms of like, putting models and keep them safe i'm i'm pretty like lackadaisical about um you know i don't protect my minis that much when i'm carrying them around i've got like an open case that other things are sliding around in and mm -hmm. uh whatnot but i think if you're yep yeah, if you're grabbing some models and some dice and you could easily grab this and go and play you know with your warband and uh, be just fine i think that's really cool yeah, yeah, I'm you know, curious to see if people do end up getting that, uh, share some feedback. I'm kind of curious yeah. you know, how tightly does it fit? Are they secure? Do they move around? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's hard to tell at this point just by looking I might, at the pictures. I mean, if if I was for Warcry, I'd probably do, and I was using these, I'd probably do one for my miniatures and one for my accoutrements, so the mm -hmm. ruler and uh, and dice and, and tokens and that sort of stuff. Um, so, I mean, I think... I think I'd still probably need two to, to bring my stuff. No, I mean, the dice and stuff don't need to be in a carrying case. You just put that in a backpack or whatever. Sure, sure. And same with tape measure. And I think yeah, the tokens exactly. are probably the thing that's hardest to like. I like to have that organized in a in a divided in thing. A case. But... Yeah, exactly. It's more this is you know, for miniatures, definitely. Yeah. yeah, so. yeah. Um, uh, but it does. Uh, yeah. So it seems like they've got a few, like one configuration, but they show a num number of different things that can fit in here. And, and you know, these are space Marines are 40 millimeter bases. So if you're dealing with 25 millimeter stuff, like you could fit even more in here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm surprised they don't show that because yeah, you could fit yep. a ton in here with that. Yeah. I, I've seen a lot of people call this the iron maiden <laughs> carrying case. So oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely, <laughs> definitely totally looks like that, you know, so <laughs> hopefully it protects your models more than the iron maiden. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. <laughs> And uh, with, with that, you know, you've seen everything that we've seen in this last past week or so uh, since the podcasts. Um, and usually we'll go to our Circle of Paint Challenge. And Vince's not here at the moment. So I'll just start with saying I haven't made any progress based on our last podcast. Still kind of um, tossing some ideas around, collecting some materials, but I haven't started building anything yet. How about you, Eric? Same. I haven't I haven't committed any of my bits to this yet. Um, yeah. There's yeah, a figured... few that are... You know, I'm like 90% sure they will be, but I haven't with with the assembling of some of these new things, right? That new new shiny takes priority right. in my yeah. hobby these days. Exactly. So and preparing for the event and everything like that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Which is which is cool. And uh um so we'll see if I make more progress in uh October. Uh um I mean I should if in order to make sure Vint doesn't, you know, mock me. Yeah, endlessly. yeah. Mocking is a true and real. Uh, it's not, it's the true motivation, right? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um. So, um. And I, 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 I bet you Vint hasn't glued anything on anything either. He can prove us wrong if when he shows up. 
Exactly. But he can't till then. Uh, so, uh, why don't we jump into our victory condition? Sounds awesome. So, in this episode, we're going to be talking about our uh, first impressions, uh, opening the box, having a sprues in hand of the new Hunter and Hunted box. Again, thank you to Games Workshop for sending us a review copy so we could uh, get our hands on it, review it, uh, give an informed uh, opinion of it. Um, we don't have a price point on it yet, which is, uh, you know, when we get these these previews, we don't have a price point on it. Sometimes that's important. Uh, so, for instance, the the new starter set, the Crypt of Blood, I think some people would have liked it better had the pricing been different or uh, mm -hmm. a lower pricing um, to make it, again, uh, if it's a first mover, a, you know, introduction for new players, you know, um, that sort of thing. Uh, so we don't know on this one. This one could be uh, all of the the boxes last year were had good pricing based on the value of what was in the box. We yeah, thought. a lot more terrain had. A lot, and that, those were a lot more board. terrain. So this one is two right. war bands, uh, a piece of terrain, a the kind of uh, lore book, uh, mm -hmm. and the cards and, and cards. So uh, there's no dice in this. There's no um, rulers. There's no tokens in this box. Yep. Um, and again, much limited terrain. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, um, um, first and foremost, uh, uh, there are. Let me let me see if this will even work. I don't even know. I've got some of these sprues uh, right here to show. So, to give you a sense of scale, here is uh, the gorger sprue. You can see They're the huge. size here. Uh, I think. I mean, they seem like they. I haven't seen as many of the rock gut trolls, uh, but they seem like they might be similar in size, maybe not quite as big. Yeah. Um, uh, but right. you know, they've yeah. got these large, large backs, and there's five models on here, um, and there's some some beautiful, um, beautiful sculpts. Um, uh, you know, one of the more impressive one is the Howler, which has uh, has his kind of arms uh, splayed out, uh, and he and just like bellowing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. Um, in addition to that, we've got our and they do um, look hungry. We've got our uh, oh, what do you think it's called? The the weird wild the core hunters. Yeah. Yes, the uh, the wild core hunters. So they, you know, just a lot of dogs. There's five dogs on here, including the one with the the leader. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. and so Only there's four separately though. Yeah, so that's yep, the yep. more important part. Yep, yep. But the so, models are awesome. They're, they're great, good variety of options. Um, you know, you can go with crossbows, you can go with spears, you can go with axes or bows, or crossbows, yeah. and yeah, a lot of lot of good choices. And the, yeah. the models again, lots of character. They're great, and they uh, all come with the special little gargoyles that you can put on their bases too. Yeah, that's kind of cool because I uh, one of the uh, I was digging through my um, silver tower stuff. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple of uh, little uh, familiars that are in there that were for like the yeah uh, um, the, the Zinch and, wizards. Uh, yeah. And one of them is one of those fish that's like walking on its hands and its tail in the air. Mm -hmm. So there's mm -hmm. a couple of those that date way back to Silver Tower, you know, six years ago or oh, yeah. whatever. Um, I don't know if it's important for people uh, to see some of like the, you know, the options. Um like you you talked about you didn't magnetize the hands for the wild core there's only maybe one of them like the um what was he called the trailblazer who's kind of the one who's crouched yeah yep. like he's got either two weapon, crossbows or a crossbow and a sword yeah yeah and and that alternate weapon is sort of part of the front of the cowl so it's not easy i mean you could probably cut you know, mm -hmm. off of the hand somewhere and, and make yeah it, a lot of them had separate magnetized. hands for the different weapons so it would be a little harder to magnetize yep yep so uh some of them uh you know like uh the guy they don't have all not every model has all the options to do either hand axes and crossbow and spear but there's right. quite a bit of options um yep. so you yep. couldn't necessarily equip everybody with spears i think no. maybe there are two that can yeah, be just the, with spears. The leather hides. Yeah, the leather hides. You have the option between a crossbow or spears. Yeah. <laughs> just two. Um, and then with the um gorgers, the leader has an just the option with two hand weapons. Uh the howler uh is just uh barehanded and has howling. You know, howling. Uh, is howling. <laughs> and then um two one of the models can be have a two-handed weapon and the other two 
um, uh, gorgers have uh, the option of, uh, so all three of them have the option that have two claws, um, but one of them can be, have a two-handed weapon and two of them can have uh, a single-handed weapon, one one-hand weapon. So um, you can make them all clawed or you could give a few of them weapon hand weapons. So uh, I am I know that some people are going to like the, you know, the two-hand weapon damage output. Um, uh, what's really, you know, kind of cool, I mean, talking about the war bands in their, um, let's see, their profiles. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we want to go down that road just real quick. Um, and you, some people will probably guess this in their theory crafting, um, you know, trying to figure out, well, what kind of profiles are we going to have? Um, oh, and then he goes ahead and just closes the page. Um, <laughs> all of the gorgers, uh, the gorger maw pack, uh, have uh, 30 wounds or more. Yeah. So uh, that's huge for mm-hmm. a... Uh, bespoke warband yeah um, yeah it's five models total yeah five models in total uh the clawback which is the leader has 35 uh, uh hit points now where uh you'll see that um being a little bit more reasonable is that they are three toughness these guys are not i think most ogres are four toughness but these guys are emaciated uh you poke them and probably food is gonna like is going to pour out or whatever's left of it. But high chest. strength and damage, baby. Yeah. So uh, two of them are, two of them are strength four, two are strength five. And, and uh, one is with the great club. The two handed weapon is strength six, mm-hmm. um, but similar, I guess um, he's only got two attacks. So they're at base, which is, you know, we've seen that a lot in these bespoke war bands in order to keep them at a certain price point. Mm-hmm. Uh, they mm-hmm. can, uh, so that one, he's 185 points. Two two six, uh, sorry, two range, two attacks, strength six, four eight damage, which yeah. is also like except for like the ogre um, uh, from the, um, oh, what is the one of the original two? The the ogre breacher uh, okay. from the oh um, from iron golems, iron golems is a gotcha. is a really strong high you know toughness or high toughness yeah. and high high yeah and the rest wounds. are great. At three five or three six, four four. four. Uh, the the howler is a five four three six, which is a tasty little like damage dealer. Um, yeah, you know with those. Uh, but again, f- strength four. There's a lot of things that are going to counter him with those uh, five attacks. And but he's got the wounds to take it. So, mm-hmm. and then yeah, four five three six for the for the clawback leader at 235 points so yeah most of these are under 200 points the cave howler is 220 and the the leader's 235 which is uh i think 240 is what the or no 280 is what the the gut lord is you mm-hmm. know who is like a three six five ten you know so um some, some lower points than some of the other big hitting ogres uh, but but yeah, but you got five beefy dudes here. Yeah. Right, five beefy dudes, and it it takes quite a bit. Like if you wanted to get some of the um, uh, gobble palooza in here, if you drop one of these, you can maybe fit two gobble palooza. So it's mm-hmm. it's not easy to get go from you can go from five to six, um, but it's not easy to go any to get any more. Like even if you pull from like you. Yeah, there's just not a lot you could do to get to more models if you're going to yeah. keep a lot of these guys in it. You'd, right. Um, right. So because they're so pricey. Yeah. 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 So, um, but if you love ogres, if you love kind of uh, a small elite warband, uh, you know these guys are for you. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wild core, similarly um, to what we would see in like Huanchi. Like, I don't, I don't know that there's more options than Huanchi in terms of yep. fighter. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Oh yeah. Um, you get what 13 in the war band with the four dogs. Uh, I think that is correct. <laughs> uh, the, you know, the trail Whoa. hounds are, are 60 wounds or 60 points, uh, six wounds, three toughness. So they'll be similar to Noblars. Um, so they're not very strong. Um, but they have, and they're beasts. So, that, but uh, of course they are. Um, uh, but there's some mm-hmm. ability synergy with having a lot of them on the board and doing some right. things. Uh, yep. most notably, um, is, uh, the, um, 
Let's the see. Arbalest? Uh, no, the, the death grip that the dogs have. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, on a double after this fighter's next melee attack action, uh, if at least one hit roll from that attack action results in a hit. So this is if a dog attacks and if one of them is a hit, it doesn't matter if it's a regular hit or a, 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 a crit, uh, the target forfeits one of their actions in this battle round. Uh -huh. uh, if that target has already activated or if they have no more actions to forfeit, allocate three damage points. So yeah. Yeah. Um, they bite you, they don't let go. Yeah. So if you had, uh, I think it would be, I don't know if there's a way to get, you know, two dogs attacking before something, you know, like if you, if you get attacked by a dog, you probably better use that model. Otherwise, another dog might attack it and take away another uh, action, action, yeah. take you to zero. So there's some really, there's some, really interesting action economy stuff. But again, these are like, it's like charging your novelars in to like take away stuff. Right. And right. so, right. Um, yeah. I mean, that's and why you get the, four. Even the reaction is like the Wanji where, you know, if they get hit, yep. the bonus the action, they can do the reaction to disengage. Yeah. So yep. it's very similar yep. in that aspect. Yeah. So, you know, I'm taking that with dwarfs. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of mixture um, of, uh, you know, they're all toughness three, obviously as, as being humans. But a lot, a lot of mixture, a mixture of range attacks. Um, you know, they got the crossbows, but they also have throwing axes. You know, so they can throw up to eight inches. Um, I ended up going with those in my particular warband just because I like that ability to be able to attack in melee within three inches. Um, yep. You know, I've seen that used effectively with Huanchi. The only uh, deviation from that is being the Arbalester, who is a serious crossbow person, um, six to twenty inch range, four eight damage, but also has a melee attack action, so you don't have to worry about that. So yeah, good variety. And I, I went with spears on my my leather leather hides just because that two inch range at strength four is nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the, a, a huge variety of models. And like you said, thirteen including the dogs. So it'll be interesting to see how they play out. So the our baluster on its own, like that that it's up to twenty inches, so it's got a six to twenty range. Which a lot of the cities of Sigmar, like uh, riflemen, have this. Um, it has. Strength four, four, eight damage, which is tempting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be hit or miss with two attacks. Like it's going to yep. be really swingy. Like it's right. it, and and again, I I played um you know a few high damage, low attack um models with the KO, and you just got to kind of like you. It would almost be better to have one or two of these. Where they really come in is they've got a couple abilities that boost the models around. They can be, um, uh, let's see, you can have. They can trigger where other models get bonus uh, the hunty pack. Uh, yeah. attacks, and then the regroup. They get it for the quad. They can uh, hand out uh, extra bonus move actions or bonus disengage actions uh, mm -hmm. within six inches. So they yeah. sort of can add some mobility to the to the warband. Um, yeah, they only have a three inch move, so they definitely there is support and not really going to make a huge yeah. impact necessarily. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, they're sitting still with their big heavy crossbow yep, exactly. platform. Right. So, right. um, but could be some cool ways to model that up if you've got other, you know, other stuff mm -hmm. to play with. Um, uh, we won't go too much for, I guess, uh, then, um, since we're on rules for right now, before we jump into the lore, do you want to talk about the maw pit rules? Yeah, sure. We can do that. So the maw pit is interesting. I'll, I'll kind of flip to the page. So I've got all the details in front of me, but, um, it, you know, it comes with some special rules and then it also has a reaction and an ability, which is, you know, we haven't really seen one in a terrain piece grant a reaction before. So that's kind of the first time we've seen that. But, uh, but the mob pit, it talks about, okay, what are obstacles, what are platforms, whatever else makes perfect sense. Um, it, it says it's a killing ground, which says you can use the reaction or the ability, which we'll touch on in a second. Um, the worst way to go at the, if at the end of the activation, if you are on the mob pit itself, not like the rocks, then you are automatically removed from play, which makes sense. You're swallowed up inside the belly. Um, and, and an interesting rule is unquestioned champion. At the end of a campaign battle, if only one fighter is on the skull platform at the end, they get a bonus one to their renown rolls and also get a bonus glory. So like, I am the only one left. <laughs> <laughs> and they dare to, dare to gloat on top of the, the mob. Exactly, exactly. Uh, the reaction is fun. This is called Desperate Gambit. And you can only make the reaction after you're targeted by a melee attack action, but before the hit rolls are made. If you're on the skull platform or within one inch horizontally of the maw, 
Uh, if each hit roll from that attack action misses, the attacker is taken down into the mob pit. But if one of them hits, you are taken down into the mob pit. So you yeah. really got to like... I So uh, if uh, the gorger with the two-handed weapon who has two attacks attacks a <laughs> tiny little dog on the mob pit, <laughs> right. use the desperate gambit and see, exactly. uh, see who dies. Yeah, exactly. And then the triple is get in the pit. You know, so you can, <laughs> it's interesting. In your next melee attack action by this fighter, you can target a fighter with lower wounds characteristics that is on the skull platform or within one inches of the maw. You roll a die and add the strength characteristic of the attack action. If the result is eight or more, the target is taken down as you chuck them into the pit. Kind of reminds me of the pushing ability in Catacombs. Yeah. Very similar. Um, what's interesting here, and I mean, we haven't, talked about the blessings uh like table yet on an mm. on an episode so maybe we'll cover that in maybe the next episode uh but it's dividing it kind of uses um wounds as a you know like elite versus regular so this is where if you've got you know if you're bigger than another model based on wound count gorgers versus welder core hunters yep 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 the gorgers are throwing the welder core into that <laughs> <pit over and over. laughs> exactly exactly um so uh again a beautiful piece of terrain i can't uh wait to see it on the table mm -hmm. um i'm sure it will we'll have it at adepticon next year and, and all throw some people in that belly yeah get yeah. in that belly <laughs> 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 oh man that good old uh i can't remember that guy's name from uh austin Powers. get in my belly uh -huh. <laughs> um all right so that's a lot of rule stuff we're not that heavy into them. like we play a lot of the rules but that's hard to convey a lot of do a lot of math hammer on the fly we're not going to prepare spreadsheets like some other uh super awesome more uh, skilled people more yeah. skilled smarter people than us um uh we're more interested in the lore uh because the lore informs uh how Juicy we play tidbits. it gives us it gives us the real insight on how to play this game because everything is 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 modeled after the lore duh not the math the people making this game aren't math nerds. Anyway, um, first, um, so some questions about the lore. Uh, mm -hmm. First impressions. Are we getting closer to the Aya Chotek? I think we sort of answered that one. I, you know, I don't think we are. I, no. I think, I mean, I think the hunters of Huan Chi and the Jade Obelisk, you know, they kind of, at that segment, we, we kind of entered the Sundered Scales region where we had more of the Chotek ruins, you know, including some some um, obelisks and stuff. Um, and then Blood, Blood Hunt sent us to another part of the map where there was a lot of blood and it was more cornate. So this brings us back to the Sundered Scales, which I, which I feel is more kind of to the east of the main wreck, but there's a lot of scatter of the terrain, of, of the wreck here. And um, I think that's interesting, and especially with the map that came with this book. Um, you know, with every update we've gotten in every book, they've added more information in the map, and they've added like particular faction outposts. And in this map, it talks about you know it shows, of course, Dogtown, which is the Wilder Core Hunter camp encampment that's kind of outside the Gnarlwood, but within the Gnarlwood. And it also shows the Gorgers Midden, which is their huge body pile encampment that's somewhat close to the eater pits which we've seen on the map before but in would addition it be all to right, that for for those that are watching would it be all right if i pulled up the map yeah let's see can you can like if, if i, I could can, try to show it here or can you i've got i'm waiting for i didn't transfer an image to my computer so i'm, I'm trying see, to see if see i can here. if i can get this close all right, you try and hold them up and let's see it because i did a little side by side comparison all right. So yeah, it's hard to tell, but from from there you can tell that they added a lot of information to a small section of the Sundered Scales, and yeah. and I'll kind of I'll draw the boundaries here. In the previous maps, we knew about the weird lights. We had the Centigar Stampedes. We had the Skinslaw Fen, Spinecrawler Webs, Fantelix Path, the Eater Pits, and so they added tons of information into the center of this area. And what's interesting about that is in this particular book, they talk about the Gorgers Midden, where the Gorgers are encamped. They added Dog Town, where the Wilder Core Hunters are encamped. Uh, they talk about a couple other interesting places called the Drool, 
and the Spire of the Void. But additionally, they add uh, lots of other peaks and, and like these little gold icons, like the, the Valley of the Sleepers, the Spire of Stars, and lots of these other interesting places in here, but they're not talked about in this book. So I'm kind of curious to see if they're going to continue to discuss these in more detail as we go throughout this next season, perhaps. Um, you know, but they're, they're adding a lot more information to this particular region of the map. Yeah. Uh, let me see if I can uh, pull it up here. I can try and... Uh, oh, man. I don't know if it's going to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I, I prepared off ahead of time. I, I did a side-by-side, -side, tried to put together a side-by-side -side from from blood hunt this, maybe, maybe. yeah the blood hunt one um and and the this current one and you're right it totally zooms in we see a few of those familiar things what was interesting one of the interesting things uh we don't see any new um like in the last season we were <clears throat> looking for new icons right uh right and we, we kind of figured out after a couple they would like introduce these new icons and then um and whatnot what was interesting was that uh in my opinion is that um the uh matzal pada's gaze isn't mm -hmm. on the map yeah no, um, that's true and did that get taken down by the um the, the jade obelisk the obelisk I, or anything i don't think so um i think that was definitely you know kind of like well some of the quest campaign arcs where you know to take down statues but it didn't you know as far as i know it didn't get taken down but uh yeah. but yeah no that that's an interesting point that is not on this particular map yeah um but i'm i'm yeah the what you mentioned is that there's these map icons the spire of stars the strangled swamp mm -hmm. that are these little little you know icons that are very similar to each other they're they're very you know specifically laid out but we don't know what they are they could be um realm engines mm -hmm. uh they could be you know points of 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 power um they could be one of those could be an interesting access point into the eye of chotek uh that we're mm -hmm. working towards and maybe one of them will get like all of them will get searched in the coming um uh books and then uh one of them will be revealed to be more important than the rest um yeah so yeah a lot of peaks and a lot of other interesting just you know points you know all sorts of interesting names the gnarl grave lake of displacement Sweltermeyer, Wretched Caves. Yeah, so all sorts of possibilities yeah. in there, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, do you want to cover any of the, you know, some of the, like you talked about, the drool and, and Dogtown, mm -hmm. or do you want to talk about those any further? Or Oh, I'll just mention the Spire of the Void. Sounds interesting. Uh, the, the book kind of alludes that it may have always been there, but not seen until now for some reason. But apparently it's, it's shrouded in very cold mist and nothing can get close to it without like freezing and then kind of dying. So, but nobody knows why it's there or what, what, you know, it's doing. So interesting okay. to see if the, this is something that was pulled out of the void because of the, the crash or is this something completely different? You know, where are they yeah. planning to go with this? You know, this yeah. mountain that can't be touched. I mean, why would you have that in there if you don't plan to do something with it? <laughs> yeah. I found, I found the drool to be super interesting and disgusting. Yes. Yeah, um, I agree. It was this one. I think is closest to the um, maybe lore of the old world, where there was this. I've talked about this before. There was this maw pit off to the east of of the European uh, part of Warhammer, um, and there was a kind of a uh, that it was this comet that had landed, and and the maw was there, and it called uh, ogres there to to feed it, um, and it was you know a time to to erupt, and at some point it was going to come out and devour everything. Uh, and so the drool is like that. There's these um, these just waterfalls of of sticky, frothy, disgusting, yeah. frothy stuff. And and they think uh, you know the kind of the butchers believe it to be sort of a sign of of uh, you know the great hungry one and uh, the great maw. And that they they throw things into it to hasten you know the awakening of this thing. So um, you know. And there's there's some you know uh, you know natural things that are happening that kind of help them believe that, um, and so we can kind of get a little bit into the new Gnarlwood lore and things that are happening. Um, Josh, what's what are some of the uh, what are some of the the kind of ecological uh, things happening in the the Gnarlwood? 
Well, you know, the, this book fo focuses a lot on the Gorgers in that respect, where um, the Gor it, it talks about the Gorgers being tied most closely to, um, you know, the, the 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 being the ogres worship you know because they're always hungry so they they more the the more primal representation of it they talk about that the the gnarlwood especially in this particular area but throughout the gnarlwood has been racked by these earthquakes and then all these maw you know uh poles are popping up and eating and devouring things trees you know uh crash wreckage you know war bands and um but they disappear if they're not fed. And so the ogre war bands and their gorgers have been flocking here because they've gotten this, uh, you know, primal message that, hey, there's stuff going down in the Gnarlwood. You need to go here. And then it talks about the gorgers becoming more, um, I don't know, sentient's not the right word, but they become more organized and more, more, you know, worship a little bit more organized in a way that they used to mm -hmm. as they migrate here to the Gnarlwood. And, and they're, they're all focused on feeding these mall holes so that they mm -hmm. continue to stay open and, yeah. and continue to expand. Well, that was one of the interesting things too, I guess, to kind of go back and something I failed to mention uh, with the, um, the mall pack is that everybody, but the clawback is, has the beast rune mark, um, which means that none of them are carrying terrain uh, and there's actually an ability that lets the clawback take on the rune mark in order to get gain certain abilities and, and like kind of a crazy attack mm -hmm. um but what's weird too is like i mean that's always sort of been in the lore is that the these are sort of you know the cursed ogres and they've always been on the outskirts and they've always sort of like you think of like sure. hyenas following behind the 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 maw pack or the mm -hmm. the, the greater maw tribes picking up the stra scraps because they're kind of outcast. Um, but I was I was surprised that maybe like they weren't being corralled by a hunter. Um, but the clawback mm -hmm. does seem to be like a, a more sentient version and able to organize right. them a little bit more, which is interesting. Yeah. Yeah, there is a, a double ability which allows models to no longer have the bestial room mark for that turn so that uh, they carry treasure. But uh, it is interesting. But then they the, drop it right after yeah, that. Right, right. But the leader can carry as much treasure as they want, which I thought was interesting. That is they just interesting. Swallow it. <laughs> carry Holy it around. cow. I, I didn't pick up on that one. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so you've got all these beasts running interference so that your your leader can go around and you can swallow all the treasure and run I around. I mean, if someone's it. carrying treasure, you just put both of them in your mouth, yeah. right? And I don't think they're slowed down, if I recall correctly. So they don't lose the two inches from carrying treasure either. But you just have one model that can carry treasure unless you use your ability. So that, that's Super the interesting unique. trade back. But also <laughs> fits really well with this lore of like in it being in and out of sentience, you know? Yes. Um, and as they yep. get closer to the this area where um, mm -hmm. the Great Maw may be having a big effect. Right. Um, we talked a little bit about the the different, the Maw Pack and the Hunters. Um, we talked about the terrain. Um what about the quests and the background traits? What do you want? What do you want to share about those? Um, so the the interesting thing I found in this book, I mean, like like most of these books, it has quests for artifacts, heroic traits, and the encampment for for the factions, which is beautiful. They also have the background tables, you know, for each of the factions. The it includes a couple of campaign arcs, which they usually do. Uh, it's a little different this time, where most of the campaign arcs included in these books um there's like one larger multiplayer campaign arc this one just has two campaign arcs um you know and most of the most of the books had a campaign arc where both of those factions in that box were fighting each other this one has two campaign arcs where you're you're playing the gorgers in one against any other faction and then the other one you're playing the valdecor hunters in any other faction okay but beyond that is something we have never seen before which is a quest chain so in this particular book they include a three to four game quest chain of the wild core hunters or seeking a target and you play a series of games to see what happens and whether they catch their target and free the commander that they're chasing after so we really haven't had that before in any of these other books and so that's that's been a fun addition i think which kind of adds this really narrative storytelling aspect for one of the war bands in this particular box set yeah um and they're using um 
you know, they're using the victory conditions and twists uh, from the pack that you get. So it's sort of taking the the random draw pack that you you're used to getting in some of these and tying each of them to uh, a story, which is sort of, I mean, we do that uh, at the, uh, when we um, do our events, you know, these victory conditions we're using from the cards and we're just trying to, to play the narrative around that. And so they've sort of mm -hmm. done the same thing here. Yep. Uh, yeah. And the book is nice because it includes all of those cards as well as yeah. also the box also having them separately. So you'll have all that information. If yeah. You buy the, book. Um, the, ter the, the terrain cards that you get in this box um, are there six terrain cards and they include um, the Maw Pit plus um, the Scales of Talaxis terrain uh, set. So if you're planning on, on getting that when that comes out along with this, um, you know, that's something that you'll, these cards will, will have that for you. Yeah. Featured um, heavily in the pictures in the book. So I figured that they intended yeah. it to be used alongside. Mm, man. Yeah, and I love the, uh, to, just as a random aside, in, in terms of the campaign arcs and the illustrations for the campaign trees, they have lots of awesome, like animal imagery. I'll see if I can share a picture. It never shows up as well. No, can nope, you get it closer of... to where maybe you get it? Yeah. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. They keep flashing in and out, but uh, but they have these little interesting creatures which mostly resemble the gargoyle and kind of creatures that they've got for the cities of Sigmar. But yeah, yeah, fun, lots of fun little kind of artistic uh, imagery associated with some of these campaign arcs and stuff. But, yeah, yeah. Um, did you have you had a chance to look through any of the artifacts or heroic traits or anything? peek out at I you. did and um you know again they, they do a wonderful job making them very flavorful for each of the factions um uh, one of the interesting things I noted is in the uh, artifact quest for both of these factions you typically just need two or maybe three games to get your artifact which is some of the other factions you needed three to four or maybe if you yeah. got super lucky it'd be two but these are like more th three at the most um so that, that that's definitely a slight change but um there was a um, a gorger artifact which enables a model to carry treasure, so you know that definitely helps out in that respect. But you could pass it along to somebody else. Um, you know, a lot of you know they they remove the the beast rune mark. Yep, yep, the fanged you know. collar. You get a collar, but you're no longer a beast. Interesting. Right, right. You, you like it holds part of your sentience essentially, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the, yeah both of them the, have a, a trait that adds either an additional wild dice or gives you an additional uh, single for initiative. Yep. yep. Yeah, and both of the factions have, I can't remember if it's an artifact or a heroic trait, but uh, enables you to use a uh, inspiring presence for free. You know, so yeah. they're both. They really, they're really trying to get us to use inspiring presence, but I don't know if it's yeah, working. They, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, with 13 models, that can come in handy with the World of Core Hunters. With the Wildegore, I think you're more likely to be able to spend that. And yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, take more advantage of that particular aspect. But, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I think the... Especially super... with, with, like, the dogs. Like, if yep. you would want to maybe, like, do an inspiring presence, have the dogs go and uh, attack, and then maybe you're more likely to go up and attack them because they've got one less. Well, and I don't know if you saw, but one of the abilities for the wilder car hunters is called a triple only used by the leader but it's called kill you pick an invisible enemy fighter allocate a number of damage points equal to the enemy fighter equal to three times the number of friendly fighters with both the mm. wilder car hunter and beast rune mark within three inches of them so, so that's if you the throw case a bunch of dogs rush the dogs in use the ability to cause three times the number of models around of damage yeah yeah do uh, any other warbands have something like that that we know about? Not not kind of like that burst damage. Okay. There are some others where you have models come in and attack, or you can use an ability to have yeah, them I attack the, for you. I thought the Royal Hunt had like a, something like that, but maybe they... They, they got a pack that. tactics, something, you know, right. like... Right, right. But it's not quite yeah, the same, so but a little bit similar. If you, can, if you can rush a bunch of dogs in and, and throw a triple to do two ti or three times as many as... So three if you times. All four yeah. dogs around there. Within three inches or six inches? Within three inches. Three inches. So, I mean, that's fairly safe to get yeah. a dog within three I mean, inches. Being combat. Yeah, exactly. And you throw a triple to just take out, or, well, not take out, but I mean, 
Well, you could, you could do 12, a lot of damage too. You had all four of them, 12 damage. That, that takes yep, up yep. most bottles, right? Yep. yep. <laughs> so, yep. I mean, if you, even, even three is nine damage. That's a lot, not considering you haven't even attacked yet, right? You know? Yep. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's super interesting. So, yeah, but like, like really fun mechanics to try. Uh, right. For those of you who like to theory hammer out whether it'll be good or not, then you know you'll see probably all of this stuff fairly soon, um, and get all the nitty gritty um, pieces. Exactly. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, what uh, is there anything else that I mean from this book that you want to shout out or um, you know before we just kind of free form it, we mm -hmm. spitball. Um. I mean, I guess you know I'll probably save it for the spitballing, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's get at it. I mean, uh, overall, I think it's a. It, I was really surprised by the box, and I really like it. Like, it's an exciting box. It's mm -hmm. two war bands that are really unique. They have a lot of interesting going for them, and I think I mean the last few war bands have all brought something pretty unique. Like all of last season's war bands had really unique stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some more than others, obviously, but both of these seem really exciting to play. They're very on opposite ends of the spectrum, which is always really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and then a huge piece of terrain and a bunch of campaign stuff like this. This feels a little bit more like the starter set that I would want to get somebody right. into yeah. because it has a high model count army or a elite army. Like there's there's complexity and simplicity in that. Um, not enough terrain for starter box. But, no, um, but. no, but I mean, even if, I mean, we've seen some pretty in that, especially in the season one stuff, um, the, the, sometimes you'd pull a card and it would have, you know, like one piece of yes. terrain and a few pieces of scatter. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But the scatter was helpful for, for being more interesting. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, I think that you could throw a maw pit in the middle and it would still be an interesting fight right uh, but you're right Agreed. but you're right i mean the the thing that's missing is terrain it's cool that that terrain box that is coming out um yeah and the any... market is big you know so you know the pictures may not do it justice but the thing is large yeah let me uh i haven't i haven't clipped this one out yet to give you a sense of like this is my hand yeah yeah exactly and the thing is the thing is substantial so, so definitely so a centerpiece on your table of the fighting over yeah my hand is this big so it's as, big as, as big as your face exactly <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean it is um i'm trying to think if there's anything else that's as big um the platforms from rabbit the red harvest uh -huh. are probably have a similar footprint like those are fairly big footprint um uh, all together yeah but yeah but they don't have I a think yeah, the surface area on this, I think, is definitely larger. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Um, do you know if how it compares to the um, like the cauldron for the butcher, like for the maw tribes? Is it similar in size to that? Do you know? I have no idea, actually. Yeah, I don't have that model, so no, no way yeah. to compare that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this is, I mean, really cool stuff. You can see the. You know the big old skulls here that are supposed to be mm -hmm. upside down uh yeah it's know. fun because it adds a little bit of that dangerous element you know it adds some dangerous terrain but also the risk of getting too close to the mop pit itself yeah playing yeah. with fire yeah. right right um so that and I, I mean i'm also i was one of the things we speculated whether or not they'd come out with some other terrain like uh, you know like i wonder I wonder if, because we talked about whether or not they would do this for each box or each release. Right. We've got we've got two war bands and a piece of terrain that's unique, and we talked about this last time. So, and when we saw kind of those other terrains in the background, like the mm -hmm. other pieces, we're yep. like, well, maybe each every time there's a release, there's gonna be two war bands, one piece of terrain, and a book. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think? Do you think that's still possible? Like we've seen them come out as a set so would they also put each of those in a box or do you think that there's other train pieces could be coming yeah i don't know so this uh you know now that we have we, you know we, we kind of waited to see okay what is this next season going to look like so now we have this box set two war bands one piece of terrain but but now we've also seen previews for two other war bands 
and a separate terrain box set. So now I'm kind of thinking like, okay, well, if they're releasing a terrain box set separately, maybe they'll re release the next at least couple war bands separately. And then maybe as we get into the winter segment, maybe they'll release another two war bands with the box sure. set and then release two separately or something like that. Um, to give yeah, people I mean, flexibility. Vint thought, I mean, the, it would be cool if there was a terrain feature that was unique to one of the two war bands. Like yeah. if the, yeah. the like a, a magma hold type, uh, like a big anvil or um, mm -hmm. a big furnace, which I mean, I guess the, the fire slayers already have a pizza oven, right. um, you know, <laughs> so you don't want to make a duplicate, but they used to have an old uh, anvil, right. That they would ring in battle. Yeah. Um, so something yeah. like that would be cool. Or maybe they give um, some to the monster hunters, you know? Well. Yep. Yep. Uh, like a big, uh, a big skull. A cage, a cage that would be awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah, um, <laughs> big bamboo cage, right. um, for cage matches, right? It's a new, it's a new Coliseum, uh, terrain. Game. Um, I'm trying to, th yeah, we don't know who else is coming down the pipeline in terms of, you know, we think that there's gonna be another order war band, right? A third order, yeah, order winter. and death is what they said for, for winter, yeah. Uh, any further speculation now that we've got like one order is fire slayers. No, um, no, we've gotten, you know, we got a, a, a vampire war band recently. Uh, we got a ghouls war band recently. So, you know, either Ossiarch Bone Reapers or, yep. or Nighthawk, uh, yep. you know, I guess, unless they come up with something unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've put out a ton of, of Nighthawk, like individual heroes in the past. Right. right. I'm, I lean them. towards Ossiarch because I think they could do su some super unique stuff and they haven't had a new release of stuff in a while. Mm hmm. Uh, or since they came that. out, yeah. um, so maybe some unique versions of the stalkers or some, you know, um, it could be interesting if they went elite and there was like an all stalker war band or something like that. Mm -hmm. I think um, it'd be cool if they did like a well, I mean, if it's an order versus something less flex, less possible, but something more like you have mortals and undead mixed together as a war band would be a lot of really interesting, yeah. you know, it could be cool if, uh, you know, uh, the Ideneth would be an interesting war band to do something unique for Ideneth in here. Mm -hmm. We haven't had, or like some other elf faction, right? Yeah, I agree. Um, Ideneth or um, the oh, what are the house. yeah, what are the what are those guys called? The Lumineth. Lumineth. Um, man, my brain forgets these words like <laughs> in the middle, like when I need them most. Um, gone right yeah gone. <laughs> um yeah i mean it'd be kind of cool to do something like that uh versus death because uh i'd not you know uh techless has fought against nagash mm -hmm. uh a couple of times and won or lost i can't remember he won uh, he won yeah he's at, in, in at, at, you know he shattered. injured himself and the mountain got shattered a little bit but yeah but nagash was sent sent away the broken realms uh yes. saga um right. so that could be cool what other order candidates are there I mean, there's a um, lot, really. Um, I, I think I think Ideneth, Lumineth, those are both good choices because we haven't really had any of those recently in a Warcry Warband. Um, Daughters of Cain, we, we kind of had in Underworlds recently in the Shadows. Yeah, we, you know, we have the Shadow Stalkers, our Daughters of right. Cain, right? Um, oh. The Fire Slayers are good, a good addition for order, but that's not part of the winter release. I mean, you could go. We've got Storm. It'd be Cain. interesting that maybe some Sylvaneth. We haven't really had a Sylvaneth Warcry Warband. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, I, I still feel strongly like we haven't gotten any hint that a new compendium is coming out. Right. Uh, I mean, that, they could surprise us. It's not like we get all of the info of what's pop, you know popping out by any mm -hmm. stretch of the imagination. Um, yeah. And well, so, maybe. like, there, I, I feel like we're we're getting a warband, a bespoke warband for, you know, every faction in the game eventually. Yeah. And that'll yeah. sort of be... I don't know if it'll be it. They could come around and do heroes. They could come around and do a second war band that could pair with the first war band. You know, they could go, yeah. they could go deeper, uh, you know, similar to what they've done with uh, Necromunda where you usually get your initial core box and then you've got some elites that you get a box of or something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, um, and, and they did away with wood elves in cities of Sigmar. So I'm really hoping they come out with some kind of war cry war band with, yeah. Maybe Sylvaneth and Wood Elves, or Karnathi and Wood Elves. Yeah, the Karnathi sort of... from Underworlds were a super yeah. unique right. thing. That would be um, kind of a really neat 
option to incorporate them back in the lore as they yeah. figure out how they're integrating them in the, in the future. Yeah. Uh, I mean, one thing to note with these guys, with the wild core hunters and maybe uh, it was, we already talked about it, but these guys are come from humans and, and, and free people that like stayed in the realms yep. that were, yep. they, these are reclaimed. not the Azerites, the reclaimed. Right. Yep. These are not the Azerites. These are not the hoity toities. These are not the, um, you know, uh, know the light of Azir. Uh, these guys have been in soaked in the blood, or their at least their ancestors, right? The their yep. generations after those who were uh, chased down and survived chaos. Um, mm -hmm. So these guys are meant to be kind of pretty hardy stock, exactly. Of, yep. of and the, they want their independence and they like operating independently. And yeah, not not to say they don't take recruits, but in general they're mostly reclaimed yeah yeah and so and that plays a lot in the um new cities of sigmar uh book mm -hmm. i think yeah. uh that kind of the azurites versus the reclaimed right you know they're working together they're trying to make it work um, but, but yeah different uh first uh, strife. political clashes there yeah yeah but uh but yeah no i mean obviously uh, speculation but coming back to this box set in terms of you know eric what are your impressions of this box set is it worth getting you know what do you like most about it yeah i mean i i think that both this box set i mean i love these gorger models and i really like the human models i'm i'm uh not sure if i want to build the human war band or not uh because i've played a lot of cities of sigmar and they may play somewhat similar or different like there's a few of like the shooty stuff that i played with early on and i mm -hmm. kind of weeded out of my lists uh because they were you know low attack so i have some mixed feelings about the the wild core um but they may have synergies and abilities that make them you know even more interesting and fun than than mm -hmm. what the cities of sigmar are yeah um, and i definitely think they're good for people who wanted a witch hunter war ban the builder core hunters are a great way to do that yeah yeah i mean having the dogs and having the ability to go up against you know a vampire or a you yeah. know other things and like take out its uh action yeah, economy. crossbows you could use pistols or you know you, totally yeah. you could do a witch hunter war ban with this yeah yeah you know and i had a witch hunter war ban for um mordheim so maybe yep. maybe maybe you've convinced me to to maybe make it more themed that especially way especially with, um, with some of those heroes that you can grab from the other places yep. and use as your leaders instead yep hex bane or the the yep. two uh witch hunters that are the father daughter exactly uh, and then uh um and i love the yeah like i said i love the gorgers um they are some really gnarly cool models yeah they are very cool looking models yeah um and then yeah and then the terrain and and the stuff yes i think it's as a winner and i would i i think you may be right that we won't see more of these boxes i don't know that this is a pattern i think this is the is the first release of this season is meant to make a splash meant to be a must buy kind of box and i mm -hmm. this paired with the scales of of talaxis i think are yes. a great combo i um, agree that you could because I mean, one of our issues with the last set of boxes what, is that you're getting all of that, and it's such a high price point. Mm -hmm. I hope that this comes in closer to a hundred dollars. Uh, you know, I hope you know as this releases, uh, we're we're recording before the release, so we haven't seen right, right. it yet. Yeah, we're right. hoping to hoping to see what that price point is. Uh, uh, so, yeah, I hope the price point is is closer yeah. to a hundred dollars for new players coming into this game. Um, I think it gives at least it gives the flexibility of like, oh, I've already got plenty of war bands. I just want the scales of Talaxis. Perfect. You got that option. Or yep, yep. I need these war bands. You got that option. I got plenty of terrain. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. nice to have that flexibility. Yeah. Is there anything you would change about or anything you would uh, do differently if you had uh, a wand to wave? Uh no, I think I mean I, I like I like how they kind of broke this up where you get a unique terrain piece that could be a centerpiece for the battles that you do in this box set, especially the campaign arcs and other things. And and the and I think the lore in this particular book focuses a lot on on the gorgers and then the Waldecor hunters hunting them down for revenge because they took out a you know a strong point. Um so I, I think the story is really intricate and detailed in terms of kind of flushing out the background in terms of gorgers and the ogre society and culture and how they work. So, you know, if you love that, this is a wonderful book to get into. Yeah. So I, I think that plays really well into the terrain piece and, and the battles, including the, the quest um, 
chain that they have for the Wilder Core Hunters. So yeah. lots of really interesting things, I think, in this book. So I, I don't think you need to add everything else, especially since they have the standalone terrain. You know, if you're thinking like, oh, I wish there was more terrain, and then they came out with the Sundered Scales, you're like, bam, there it is. Yep. This yep. is perfect. This is great. My, if I were to wish list one more thing is I, I wish there were tokens in this. I don't, I don't think it needed dice. I don't think it needed, uh, you know, like the, um, mm -hmm. Crypt of Blood had a token sheet that also had like a ruler device that had some, you know, issues with it or whatever. It wasn't a perfect scale, uh, right, a right. perfect ruler, but you know, something like that, I think would make this a perfect starter set, sure. um, in the way that, you know, like, again, I think after playing Crypt of Blood, I mentioned it, like it's fun. It was fun playing. Uh, I played a game with some games with Paven through the storyline mm -hmm. or through some of the stuff. It was fun. Uh, um, we came up with a narrative and it was fantastic. Um, it wouldn't, you know, but it, is it the first? Would it be the, you know, the first one that I would recommend somebody to get? I think this one is probably closer to that, but it doesn't have some of those like tokens are kind of a important thing for new players. Right. Right. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see if that comes in the terrain box that or not. I don't know if yeah. it's supposed to. It didn't say, yeah. but if it did, then that might be a good way to kind of like add that. Yeah, yeah. Or if they come out with a separate where you can buy the like a little a little fifteen dollar pack of ruler and and dice and tokens, like that would be right. fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. and that would be a great stocking stuffer. You know, I agree. That's um, nice. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, anything else right. you want to talk about here? No, no, I mean, again, uh, I was blown away by the, the quality of the models. Again, the, they do a great job coming out with unique uh, characteristic war bands for Warcry and, you know, Underworlds as well. You know, and it's just amazing to continue to see like, wow, where did this come from? This is just cool. That's great. So, Of the four war bands that we've gotten the preview of, of the four, which are you the most excited to get on the table? Ooh, dang, that's tough. Because we got you know, the Gorgers fire slayers, cool awesome. Boys, they fit their gorgers, so great. The fire the slayers look awesome. Um, I like the Wildercore Hunters. You know, I, I'd probably lean towards the Wildercore Hunters or the Fire Slayers. You know, with the Gorgers being a close, like second in there. Uh, I like the Cruel That's Boys, a, but third. Yeah, well, you know, no, I'd like two or two are tied for like first. <laughs> <laughs> Still, it's third. <laughs> <laughs> But how about you? What do you think? Um, yeah, of the four, the Gorgers are right in my wheelhouse for, and I, I've, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I don't love you like elite armies, so I've not like I played the Soul Sworn, which are six models, which yeah. was as lead as I've played, but they lack kind of a really punchy, mm -hmm. like a high damage, high toughness. Like they lack both of those things for six yeah. models. Um, or no, sorry, they have high toughness. They yeah, lack yeah. high wounds, high damage. Um, well, twenty five wounds is still high wounds. Only one of them gets twenty five. the The leader does. The rest are twenty, I think. Um, oh, okay, twenty still. Uh, so which is like not bad, but it's sort of <laughs> not like, thirty. It's not it's thirty. Not, no, not thirty. So, <laughs> um, I think I, I'm more in, like I think the the gorgers are a little are more interesting. Uh, and my obviously my son agrees. So uh, yeah, I was is both, hunger uh, hunger something that runs in the family. Uh, just you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've always had a little bit of a of a a, 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 a pouch here, so no, not for me. I guess my my son maybe. So he, maybe he has the hungry curse. Ogres uh, and gorgers. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I'm the tyrant, and he's the the clawback. Well, there you go. I like it. I like it. Um, slaughter. So yeah, I mean, I think I, I'm. I've, yeah. I was so surprised when I saw them. I think that like the fact yeah. that we pulled Gorgers in as the representative of the the ogres, because I was I was <laughs> part of that. Is I was a little worried that we would get more of like that new hunter with like the tiny headed ogre with the you know svelte you know body gotcha. type. Yeah. And so yeah. you know I I I don't want more of that. I like our big beefy ogres that we have or big you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm barrel shaped ogres um, yeah well, these are definitely more primal like uh emaciated well for being strong and for being hungry they are big boys oh yeah it's yeah, like it's like frank they eat so much that it goes straight to their muscle development and then uh gets zapped out of their body so like yeah yeah 
I'm surprised that the, I would be I, if there was one that was like super skinny and frail, like you know, like those uh, Morn goals or something like that. Like I wouldn't right. have been surprised if they'd gone that direction either. Yeah, like, yep. like Slender Man yeah. almost. But, Very similar, like the Wendigo. How you would have picture a Wendigo model? Yeah, I mean, maybe you got some more options here for that army you've I, been building. I know, I know. Not that's not what you need though. You don't need more options for that. <laughs> you just need that. You need that to get that one done. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that uh, that takes us to the end. Do you want to wrap us up? I will wrap it up. To? Okay. So we talked a lot about how we think about this book, the box set, the models, and we hope that it's at least been insightful to you and help you uh, decide whether you want to get this or not. Again, you know, Eric and I don't know what the price point is. We're really curious to see what that's like. We don't know when uh, Sundry Scales or anything's coming out, but I'm certainly looking forward to that as well. But, you know, you heard it here. If you'd like to follow up with us and share your thoughts and comments, please visit us on the Discord, themortalrealms.com backslash Discord. Uh, you can also shoot us an email at docswarcry at gmail.com. Um, if, you. if you're listening to this on any of the podcasts, then you know where to find us there. If you want to watch us in this episode, the last few episodes, go to youtube.com forward slash the mortal realms. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Welcome to the Midwest. I'm the Bruce. This is Marathon. This is a podcast. You'll never find right. I'll be in the fall. We can't show frost. Nice. Run, roll, roll. And this one's never going to go. Welcome to the Dark of Warcry.